I V M. Hello and welcome to our latest episode of Football Football, the one after Diwali. And Diwali is a festival of sales. So usually you get three of us on this podcast. But this time we're coming up with a plus one offer. It's three plus one because we, the Football Football crew, which is me, Karthik, Shivram and Sapre, have got with us Slok Ramchandran. Slok is the host currently of the Millennial Athlete podcast on the IBM network and every other major podcast platform. Slok, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super, super psyched for this episode. Yeah, I mean, so was I. So about for your podcast as well. So we had heard that you and Tanvi were doing uh, the Millennial Athlete. And then you pinged me out of the blue saying that I want to come on football, football. So why is that? And just to give context to everyone out there, Slok is a professional badminton player. So is Tanvi. Both have represented India in the past and will hopefully continue to do so. How, how is it that you want to come on a football podcast? So, I mean, badminton is, is my job. But uh, football is love. So, you know, ever since I was 11 or 12, uh, I've been a Chelsea supporter. Uh, my whole, uh, my cousins, you know, are mad Chelsea supporters. So, they got the Chelsea blood in me. Uh, there, are, there have been some heartbreaks, uh, you know, ever since the Champions League final where my friend uh, Mr. Anelka missed his penalty. But, uh, yeah, so football has always been high on the list, beat any FIFA game. Or just, uh, you know, in our downtime at the national camp, we would go to our friend's house and play PlayStation all night. Uh, so, yeah, so football is love. Badminton is pretty much a job. Sapre, have you ever had the opportunity to say cricket is love and this podcasting is my job? I wish I had a chance to do it ever. I just think he came on the podcast to just see how the other side looks like. Like people who are unfit and people who just do this as a hobby. Basically, who talk about sports now, all these yeah. armchair critics. Yeah, you think he's yeah. doing that. I think so. But I think I think good one to you, Karthi. You tried to fish for some compliments as to why did you come on this podcast? And not this <laughs> I mean, I mean, let's see. Here's the thing. Okay, the his the previous podcast Slok was on was with Cyrus. This is a step up, right, Chivram? Yeah, absolutely. And, and from what I hear, if it's uh, you know one sport and another sport, he's basically the nightmare of Indian parents. I mean, ek to kam kar lo yaar. Matlab kahan se aayega? Ye to arts ke saath arts. Insane. Yeah, okay, so we'll we'll get to more with, with Shlok, with Shiva and with Sapre and with myself. But first, I mean, we're obligated to hear from Amit. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another great week on the IVM Podcast Network. If you're not following us on social media, please do. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Want to wish you all a happy Diwali. Hope you had a great festive season. It's been a great week in terms of the kinds of guests we've had and the kind of conversations we've had on the network this week. Do definitely check some of these things out. On this round's on me with Gauri David Al. She had a great conversation with Gauri Marora, who's one of the best known chefs in the world. It was just absolutely riveting. Do check that out. On States of Anarchy, Hamsini Hariran spoke about chronicling India's different wars. Again, really interesting episode. Check that out. Ashton had a very interesting episode on his show, The Habit Coach. It was called I Don't Feel Like Doing Anything. It's about how to overcome Malays just generally, and I thought really, really interesting stuff. Kumi Vayana was the guest on Cyrus Says on Monday's episode last week, and uh, she's an educator. And my God, it was such a fascinating conversation talking about the way education functions in India and some of the changes she'd like to see. Just really, really interesting stuff. Do give that a listen. On Uncle Please Sit, Anupam Manur was there with Joel and Tushar talking about the Indian economy, part one of a two-part series. Second part will be out this week. You should definitely check that out. Lastly, I want to talk to you all about the Filter Coffee podcast. Karthik Nagarajan, who hosts that show, is on a little bit of break he's back with a banger of an episode it is with Himura Maya who used to run landmark stores and they talk about the culture of bookstores and quizzing and all kinds of stuff really interesting conversation do check that out and with that let me get you back to your show so welcome back to football football a special post Diwali episode with Shlok Ramchandran Shlok you are a co-host of the millennial athlete tell us what's that podcast about uh so yes so pre-lockdown uh uh, Tanvi, my co-host and myself, you know, we wanted to get out stories, you know, apart from cricketers, you know, cricketers always have their stories, you know, outside, but you know, not all of our sporting stars have their stories outside. Uh, so we just wanted to, you know, bring 
their story out and from an athlete's point of view we thought that you know maybe you know because we've also played a bit of professional sport uh, we can have a candid conversation so that was that was what our aim was and eventually moving on uh, towards our perspective to one second i'm going to stop you right there shivram and i can say we have played a bit of professional sport maybe one roots league here and there yeah. you have represented the country boss <laughs> I mean, I've had a fairly decent career. Uh, not to say that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a very modest Tambram child, na. So, welcome so to the uh, podcast. Uh, <laughs> this is now an year takeover. Somebody <laughs> take a hike. <laughs> uh, I mean, so yeah. So eventually, moving on to you know some more serious uh, conversations like you know uh, why India isn't getting enough Olympic medals, and you know. So our next episode is going to be about you know how far we are off from the powerhouses like UK and you know just trying to look at sport ad- administration just because we've been part of professional sport so just trying to get everything to light to you know all the general audiences out there. So so when when a listener tunes into the Millennial Athlete Podcast, excellent choice of name by the way. It is something I clicked on simply because it was named Millennial Athlete. Yeah. So what what can we expect from the show? Like I know. You guys are talk like you're. I think this week talking to Ajay Jairam, your fellow professional badminton player, and other other such cases. Yeah, so this week we spoke about Sport 2.0. Uh, you know, post COVID. So we mm-hmm. got in Ajay all the way from Europe, who was playing the Denmark Open at that point of w- time. Wasn't he stuck there? Yeah. Then uh, you know, this was after we recorded. So after that, we wished him good luck for Sarlor Lux, and well, the good luck didn't actually materialize. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, but then we did. Well, uh, I'll stop you there, Shlok, because I don't think Shivan Sapre know this. So poor Ajay Jairam. Yeah. He and I think Subankar, Subankar, they they were playing the Denmark Open. About no, a couple of weeks. The Sarlor Lux Open. Sarlor Lux Open. Okay. Uh, I think a few weeks ago, and. because they came into contact with the father of another player uh lakshya sen who is the next big thing or the current big thing in indian badminton they were forced for two weeks on their own personal penny because almost badminton players go using their own dime right? right they had to stay they were stuck in london in denmark and were i don't think allowed to play that tournament as well so is this like what do you mean is just they were just like sitting in a hotel room while paying for right. it and doing nothing You no, know, but the problem was that they were in Germany, and Germany was supposed to go in a national lockdown. Uh, so it was a lot of it was a, a very panicky situation for them. But uh, you know, one of those good days when uh, Sports Authority of India came to their help, and you know, they actually evacuated them in like three, four days. Yeah, that's not bad at all. I mean, yeah. credit where credit is due. Yeah, 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 yeah because, obviously. Ah, uh, okay. So this happened before this lockdown in Europe that was that is exactly, yeah. currently where in okay, okay. Okay, so going back to your podcast with Jairam, what what can listeners expect when we listen to the Millennial Athlete? So, you know, just the their journey from uh, from you know from being somebody who just picked up the racket of their sport to you know becoming who they are. Uh, we we uh, we spoke to Nikhat Zarin the other day, and you know everybody thinks Nikhat Zarin is this you know snob who challenged uh, Mary Kom, but nobody really knows who Nikhat Zarin is. So we try to get that on light, uh, and just basically. when we're talking to you know the experts from sports science from a nutrition point of view and you know just trying to you know give answers to the next gen athletes of what to expect and you know how do you actually become a superstar in your respective sport sapre you know what sells right they they had nikhat zarin on on the podcast but the promo clip that they put out was one where nikhat zarin says she is a salman bhai fan Yeah, that 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 is how you promote promote a show, right? Otherwise, who's how are you going to get people to listen? I mean, we face that issue. All our shows are named after Bollywood movies. Yeah, yeah, no, I, good good tactic you've used right now uh, with using Salman Bhai. I think it's very popular. I I actually, you know, all of this is very fascinating. I actually have a very important question to ask, uh, which has been lingering for years. When I was a kid playing badminton, this uh, firstly all badminton people who play badminton slightly decently are snobs. I don't know why. <laughs> oh my goodness! You should see the bunch of them who play in Willingdon gym. Kana man, an <laughs> auntie shushed me saying, "Ab, wo bachcho ke time pe aao na." It took it took their shoes squeak more than the traffic outside on the road. That's one. They're all snobs. And secondly, I don't know. At least the friends that I played with, 
they came with some yonix racket i have animal guts i don't know what what is why why badminton players or baddies so, so such snobs yeah baddies uh, no so actually so you must have met uh, people from south bombay no south bombay oh. people are generally snobs <laughs> oh, you come God. you come you come to the better side of mumbai uh, which is you know also known as kandivili uh, borivili wait wait wait, wait, wait. <laughs> relax you said better side of bombay and then you went outside yeah. bombay relax hey, it's I still loved, on the western line it's still on I the western line i loved how you In, took a generalization and replied with another generalization and that is the end of that and you went to kandivili and borivili so let's not i, I mean no, sorry hold on hold on hold on i know i I wanted Shlok to finish it, it mean, because after Kandivli and Borivli comes Daisar, where I've grown up. Here comes the card. <laughs> yeah, I stopped him right there. So all my plan that I had in my mind has gone down the drain. But no, so South Bombay badminton baddies are snobs. You're saying? No, in general. So so yeah. there was so there was a lot of time when I used to go and play the MSSA inter schools, and there would be the, these kids from Bombay Scottish, and they would just come in their fancy Audis, and they they must. Is- <laughs> One, 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 one second, Shlok isn't Tanvi from Bombay Scottish? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. He is from Bombay Scottish, but and then we have this argument every day that you know Bombay Scottish is so much better than Ryan International. Ryan, is, Inter- you Chinese were in Ryan International? Is, yes, I went to Ryan. Oh my God, that is like McDonald's. It's in every corner. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's still better than McDonald's though. Yeah, I mean, depends on what you, <laughs> what you like. Uh, what is your uh, take on Stanislaus? So I'm not from Mumbai originally, from Delhi. I know uh, someone who's from Stanislaus. I don't know what you think of Stanislaus. Are they even worth talking about when it comes to sports? I mean, they're okay. I mean, we didn't even consider them. Uh, you know, now that you you know actually got that name out, I said, oh, there was a school like this which actually played a lot of sport. Uh, but no, second round, third round. At no scene. No scene. No scene. No scene. No scene. Kartik, we dominated. Kartik. Ryan dominated. Got Karthik. Since you are from Stanislaus, uh, do you want to say? <laughs> no, I mean, I'm fine. We we didn't have a badminton court. It was one thing that was missing. I think I would have represented Stanislaus in some of these tournaments, man, and probably lost five years. Being five years elder to him, I would have maybe lost to him in school. Stanislaus should have a recording studio because all their uh, kids are doing this now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all okay, so let's let's get back to the task at hand. So, are you done plugging Millennial Athlete? Can can be yes, yes, yes. Uh, promotion yes. hogya. Uh, Kavita will be happy. Tanvi will be happy. Let's go on to the the real deal. The real deal. Okay, let the real deal. We'll start with is you. Uh, you have represented India. You, I think, I, one one thing I need to appreciate about Wikipedia and badminton. However, whatever level you have reached in badminton, Wikipedia will always update your profile. Oh, I don't know who does it. There's some big major. What do you think fans badminton about. players are doing in their free time? <laughs> Come <laughs> <Come on. laughs> Rose, now this is going on my Wikipedia page. So, right, and I'll go back and the football, football episode numbers. This, this, this. Oh, sweet. Starring. So yeah, so. We we'll do the, it. We'll have a red. Only. We'll not be in blue. Red football shirt will be in the red color. Tradition needed. Golden, golden. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, nice. And okay, so tell us, tell us about you, about your career. On your Twitter bio, it says uh, X Pro, and I, I don't want to call you that because you're you're 25 years old. It doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know the reasoning behind it, but yeah. give us more. Um. So, so I took an indefinite sabbatical from the sport uh, this February. Uh. So you know, I, I, I specialized in men doubles. And uh, my partnership, uh, you know, the the foreign coach had come and you know taken away my partnership with Arjun. With uh, with Arjun Amar. Who, Wait, uh, sorry. Know. What does that mean? What does taken away my partnership? So mean? I was a men doubles uh, specialist. So uh, so I was thirty one in the world. So if only. Oh, if damn! Wait one second. Sorry. What? <laughs> I can was we just <laughs> can we just stop for a second? You were thirty one. You were the thirty first best player in the world. Double spare in the world. Sir. Sure, whatever. <laughs> that is not. I mean, a Sapre has not reached that level in FPL. <laughs> you were that good in the world. Um, so yeah. So the thing is that um, you are only supported by the federation if you are in the top twenty-five. That's the current rule. Till about three years back, it was you have to be in the top fifty. Uh, but in India, instead of going up, you tend to you know make it tougher for the second stream guys. Mm-hmm. my partnership was broken by a foreign coach obviously we couldn't do anything because you're part of the system so uh, one one second when when you say broken uh, this person just comes to you, you and arjun and tells you one day okay you all are no longer together shlok you go find another partner arjun we have somewhere else for you ye shaadi nahi ho sakti and so basically he came he gave arjun one partner and he was indirectly telling me tumse na ho payega right oh uh, my uh, but uh, yeah so so the whole thing is that if you want to you know start a new partnership it goes from zero again Mm. and it's it's a big investment like nobody's paying 
money for you and you know i just didn't think that you know with the new partner they were giving me i had any chances of recovering whatever money i was going to put in and mm-hmm. i had uh, you know a few dreams and aspirations of mine which i wanted to do which was at some point of time you know was going to take you know the major seat in my life so i decided to come back i've been away from bombay for 10 years i moved to bangalore when i was 16 then moved to hyderabad i was there for about 7 years uh, i think it was time my parents wanted me to you know come back home it was a mutual decision and now i am trying to get into corporate for some reason i don't know why yeah. what is corporate like getting into corporate sports like corporate. management oh, uh, trying, trying my hand on sports management hopefully some good news uh, in the next month or so No, no, wait. It sounds like this X is becoming too much of an X. Uh, I'm not having this. Wait, you need to go back. I don't know why I'm giving Gyan here. But You're you living your dreams. Back. We are yeah. suddenly your dad. We are all combined your dad. Hey, Papa, now hello. And Cyrus like, also said the same thing. Uh, Cyrus is like, no, 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 no. You are playing. You are going. <laughs> you are playing. And it is not a question mark. It's an exclamation mark. You are going. Yeah. Because you know what? Why this this bugs me? And this is nothing against you, Shlok. But Shiva, sorry. When I messaged him today, I asked Shlok. I said, "Give me a little write up about you. So how can I introduce you?" He said, "Former bad pro badminton player. Hmm. I'm 25 years old. I mean, this this happened used to happen in tennis long, long ago. When yeah. and it's it's crazy to even think about it. But okay, let let's get back to. I think there's something I think we and also the people listening will be interested in is this financial aspect, especially when you play individual sports. You're not you're not under contract with a club. Like even even here, if you play say in any small Bombay division, you still get a remuneration from a club. In an individual sport, how does it work? Um, so there's no corporate support to be honest. Mm-hmm. So whatever money you know when I was younger and I played international tournaments was just crowdfunding through my dad's friends who were very kind enough. to you know give me 500 dollars or 600 dollars either other say they would you know give me some money and come the other problem is that there aren't a lot of public sector jobs available for the best uh, players in the country so like after my career where i have about five national championship medals 13 or 14 domestic titles seven international titles i didn't find a place in ongc or indian oil or bharat petroleum anywhere so what so what does that mean slok because So this is what they do in the Ranji system, right? Like when cricketers go, they just for naam ke vaste they give you a job in say the railways, but your main job is to play cricket. What kind of job now? Now speaking to you for so long and knowing you, what kind of job would you do in an ONGC? And I and I do I don't mean to sound snobbish yeah. here, but yeah. like I, I don't think that would have been your dream to work for yeah. ONGC. I get it, but it does give you a certain cushion, right? Uh, for at least okay. for the next two three years that you know I am getting a certain amount of money every month. just for playing so that you know i can you know maybe possibly continue playing right so if i would have had an ongc and ioc i maybe could have given a year or two more mm. to just see because there is a certain amount coming the problem is when you partner with a new guy you suddenly lose the equipment contract you have because they because they are not going to pay you for your old ranking now they are only going to pay you with your new ranking mm. so that was another big issue but that the but the biggest problem in all of this is that when you know you look at a malaysia or a korea or a china ever since a kid makes it to the senior national team or the junior national team every penny spent is by the federation and they take a certain amount of the cash prize they get back so it is a very good system which is fair in india unless you become a shrikant or a pv sindhu or a pranoy it it is all your investment uh, that is why you know we we struggle to see you know Uh, you know, in badminton, you know, we are fortunate enough to have this golden generation of shuttlers, which where you've got eight players in the top fifty. Uh, but who, who next? I mean, after Saina Sindhu, who next? I mm-hmm. mean, I, I still feel, you know, if the the federation would have invested a little bit more on the youth. Uh, I mean, if I am the best in the country when I'm playing domestic tournaments, I shouldn't be worrying about where my next flight is, where my next meal is going to come, how do I reach this place. So I'll tell you this, a very funny incident which happened, which happened to me in Azerbaijan. So I was playing the Azerbaijan International Challenge last year. We were playing the semi-finals against the German pair who were world number nineteen. There was a blackout in Azerbaijan, so the semi-finals were shifted to Sunday. So normally on Sundays you only have the finals. Right. Our flights are mostly booked on Sunday night. So we are playing our semi-finals at three p.m. and our flight is at seven p.m. So we have gone taking our luggages to the stadium itself. and i don't know it shouldn't come in my mind saying that you know you know if we win we 
So if we would have won, we would have had to pay extra for our flight, which would have costed us a bomb, pay extra for our accommodation. And if we would, we would have lost, we are going anyway. So we are losing in both case. I mean, though we are playing the finals, but either it, it's hurting us financially or it's hurting us mentally. How I much mean, does it cost? Is, uh, and again, you please, please put a number out there. Say um, now, uh, you're going to, you're, so, suppose two years ago, you had to go to Denmark to play the Denmark Open. Okay, you had yeah. qualified for it. You had gone there. Yeah. Personally, how much would it cost you and your backers? 85,000. To go and come back. To go and, and come back, my single single everything. Yeah. Okay. So if I'm, if I want to make the top 50, I have to play at least 14 tournaments a year. So, the, so the roughly the cost comes around close to 12 to 13 lakhs. And what is a recovery in this in terms of prize money in badminton? Um, the, the recovery in prize money isn't that great, but the recovery is mostly on equipment contracts. I was with Yonex for five years. Okay. So, so most of our money comes from slabs. If you're ranked 30 to 40, you get X amount of money, 40 to 50. So as you go higher, you get a better pay. Uh, but once you turn 25, 26, these contracts are very tough to come by. Unless you aren't the real deal and you've made it to the top 20 or top 15, the equipment contracts, they tend to go towards 20 year olds, 21 year olds. So it was, mm. you know, considering all of these decisions, uh, I thought that, you know, maybe, you know, if I would lose this money, I come from a very middle class family. If I would lose X, Y, Z amount of my investment, I wouldn't have anything to fall back on. Right. right. I would be stuck. You know, I wouldn't at 28, I would have had no option but to join railways, probably become a coach. And mm. I would have absolutely no nowhere to go if there's a 50-50 chance. I could have done well, and but there is a slightly bigger chance that you know I couldn't have possibly even done well. So, okay, so Sapre is a new father. Yeah, and maybe Kimaya takes up badminton uh, when, when she grows up. When she's 13, 14, she's pretty good. She's excellent at school level. How much will he need to save so that Kimaya can get to travel the world and play tournaments all over? 30 lakhs? Poof. I just Sapre, have that. Sapre, I, just, you have your... <laughs> I, I just need to work three more jobs. <laughs> so but but <laughs> if she does well, if she does well, she she also gets back close to a crore. So. Uh, course, see, Sapre is I... already buying your next. <laughs> <laughs> but so, so from what you're telling me, Shlok, this is... Or tell me, actually, is this very similar to a lot of the other sports because I've, I've, I've known some, some snooker players who played for India and it's a similar struggle for them as well. Uh, you know, you have the top one, two, three, you know, ranked players maybe find a job at Moen GC uh, or Indian Oil or maybe a bank or whatever else. But everybody else just struggles. Uh, but so, so maybe is there a change that's needed you think across or you think badminton is still a better return for, for the authorities to focus on first? Um, badminton is still slightly better, I would say, in terms of public sector jobs. You know, I, we spoke to Aditya Mehta on the first season of the Millennial Athlete and we discussed uh, all of this. See, either you need to be, you know, you need to come from a very good family. That, you know, irrespective, if you don't make it, you have their support so that you can play those, you know, uh, you know 10 to 12 tournaments a year. Uh, public sector jobs are very hard to come by. I mean... I mean, if somebody like me couldn't even land a, a Indian oil job, I don't see how, you know, anybody else, you know, or they have to be, or you need to have a certain godfather, where, which is there in every sport. But yeah, it is tough. I mean, unless the government comes up with more policies uh, to encourage sports, till, you know, we do not take it to heart saying that with a population of close to 1.5 billion, we are just coming up with two medals or one medal. Till we don't take it to heart, nothing's going to change. Are you saying... You were 31st in the world. There were 11 people between you and a future where you would be a current badminton player. Is that right? Yeah, I, I wasn't funded. Even at 31, I was, I, was, I was stopped. The federation stopped my funding because I wasn't in the top 25 of the world. So six yeah. people, not yeah, just so, 11. So six. I'm 31 in the world, but I'm still paying my own money to go and play tournaments. That How does that sense. make sense? And yeah. it is not a pro sport. I, I, I can understand if tennis is a completely pro sport. You get in and you you get back whatever you pay. So in badminton, the prize money goes first to the federation and then it comes back to the players. In oh. tennis, it's very clear. You play, you win, it comes back to you. Simple as that. Oh, in badminton, badminton, even though you're not funded by the federation, you still owe some money to the federation. No, no, you don't owe anything. It's I mean, if you win. If it you... comes there, then they will send it to us. It okay, doesn't so come it's, directly to it's us. Routed, it's routed through the it's, federation. It's a, it's a routed thing, basically. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. So that, that's you and about your career. I think I think we were a bit a bit down on it. 
uh, slightly, I feel. Okay. So Slok, tell us your highs, man. Come on. Like, okay, this is, all this has happened over the past, over the past one year, I think. 2020 is shit anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so let's look back. Tell us some of your best, your best highs. And when you won, I don't know, what would you said? Some seven titles. Go and look up on Wikipedia. Shlok has updated it to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, uh, but it is BWF who has, uh, who has up- uploaded. Not me. I'm a very modest kid. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, uh, I played the Thomas Cup in 2018. I remember, you know, growing up uh, as an 11-year-old, my dad, it was my dad's dream to actually play the Thomas Cup. And when I first, you know, gave him a call saying that, Dad, I've made the Thomas Cup squad. Uh, that's the first time where he actually told me that, you know, son, you've made it. I mean, yeah, he's, been, awesome. uh, he's been my biggest fan, but he's also been my hardest critique. Uh, so that was a very special moment. I played the World Championship thrice. Uh, I wow. beat uh, the World Championship 2017 quarter finalist, a Korean pair. Uh, you know, we've, I've had some really special moments on career. You know, I obviously never won a national title. I came very close. Uh, the last nationals, uh, you know, we, I got a silver medal. Uh, we lost to my very good friend and current Commonwealth silver medalist, Chirak Shetty, uh, who's again my school friend and a very nice buddy of mine. But yeah, the, my proudest moment is, uh, you know, my, uh, my stint at the Thomas Cup because it is something which I grew up watching. And, you know, I had to make the Thomas Cup squad at least once. And I'm so glad I did make it. But tell me, Shlok, like a lot of sports have have a phenomenon of late bloomers, right? In badminton, if, if what you're saying is the case, they are anyways not never going to get a chance. In, let's say in cricket, at least or other sports, at 23, 24, also your game can pick up and you can play a few See, tournaments here and there. They can. But uh, if you look at all top 10 players right now, all of them have been ever since they were 20, 21. And then they've had their lows of injuries and then coming back. Most of them, you look at even our Indian players, Srikant, Pranoy, Sai, all have made it by 20 to 23. They've made it once. Even if you look at the world level, there is like one in a thousand or one in like one lakh, some like a Jochim Fisher Nelson, who at 28 decided to play mixed doubles and started doing really well. But the odds are really stacked against you. Or apart from if your federation is supporting you, then it's okay. You are, you have like if, now tomorrow, if you and me are partners and uh, Karthik and uh, Shiva partners and the coach decides and tells that, you know, tomorrow it's not working. Shlok, you and Karthik play and Gaurav, you and Shiva play. At that moment, the federation is still supporting you, whatever the ranking is. And they are giving you a fair run saying that, okay, the coach has done this. It's on us to support you for a year and let's see how, then we will review that. Karthik, we know we wanted to talk about fitness. When did we come to, I think last week and I think people brought it up on last week's podcast also. It yeah. was about, I think when Safre brought up this international breaks and how, you know, going on Ole's theme of how uh, footballers shouldn't be playing uh, 5.30, 12 o'clock. Fixture for that time. schedule was off. Yeah, the schedule, schedule was off and, and we anyway wanted to do this. So it's good that we got someone, I think, I think among the three of us, uh, the only person who can, who, who's as close to an athlete as, as they can be is probably speaking into the mic right now. But, uh, <laughs> just lie blatantly, why don't you? <laughs> see, see, all, uh, for, for the honest truth, all you have to do is see our Instagram stories. If you go to Shiva's, you'll find all sorts of workouts happening there. If you come to mine, <laughs> I would have put Kanda and Piaz and asked you, guess what's cooking? So, <laughs> that, that should tell you who is Kanda the most. Kanda and Piaz. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's. Um, but what about Gaurav? Gaurav is uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Puma fanatic. I'm an after hours athlete. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but yeah, but we were getting to this because we wanted to speak generally about, about fitness and sport, about in particular, and this has been a long drawn out conversation. We'll start there as well with this IPL that has just, just taken place. I mean, players, cricketers, they, they obviously they hadn't played for, for months on end. Some of them came back looking unfit. I mean, uh, again, I don't want to say that they were unfit because we had comments about Saurabh Tiwari. We had comments about Rohit Sharma. Pollard has been commented on his entire career. We had comments about Rishabh Pant. Hey, at the end of the day, three out of those four are from the Mumbai Indians and they just won the title slope. Yeah. So... Were we wrong in saying that maybe they came in as unfit and maybe as fans, do we look at fitness as just this one type of Ronaldo figure? And that's about it. Fitness and cricket is something which has just evolved in India. You know, mm. ever since Dhoni and then Virat, you know, actually like, you know, took over the reins. You've seen like, you know, the like of Hardik Pandya and Virat, you know, getting extremely fit. KL has, has become extremely fit. Uh, Jaspeed Bumrah has been really fit. But before that, if you look at, you know, even our greats, you know, all of them had their little paunches. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah, so, 
I I feel uh, you know it's, it's a very personal opinion that you know cricket does require a certain amount of fitness, but it is like if you are a spinner, you don't need to have. Like six pack abs, or you look at Amit Mishra; he can bowl for the next ten years. I, I completely agree with you, Sapre. Which is which is why maybe this entire concept of fitness that we have in our head—you just can't say cricketers are unfit, right? I mean, they are fit to do their job to the best of their abilities, and they're doing it. I agree, dude. I, I I think to Slok's point, after I think especially the Virat fitness videos has just uh, made everybody believe that if the captain is behaving a certain way and figuring out fitness, and everybody else should, I think. With all the other examples, Rohit Sharma did what he had to do in the match yesterday. He was was he unfit? Oh, definitely he was unfit. Uh, but did that stop him from doing what he's good at? I don't think so. So it's, I think it's great if you're fit. Maybe in a in a in a sport like but but, but why is that? Why is that? Why why do we always say that it's it's? Oh, but he can do much better if he's fit. It's great if you're because. Fit. No, because, I have an opinion on this, but and wow. I think cricket is by definition forgiving a sport. Because a lot of it, like uh, Shlok just said, a spinner doesn't possibly need to get six-pack abs. I think the spectrum that we are saying for fit is you've made it very limited. When you said fit is Ronaldo, and mm-hmm. unfit is someone playing cricket, right? That's mm-hmm. I think the spectrum is much broader than that. Okay, all three of us are certain levels of fitness, right? All mm-hmm. four of us are certain levels of fitness. By in that spectrum, I'm pretty sure Shlok is not Ronaldo right now, right? Or uh, Sapre is not the largest man on the earth, right? But there are certain things you can do or you can't do. Football is not as forgiving. Football, you can't stand in one place and not be able to run after the ball. Hey, but you I saw expect- Messi's video or no? In the he was, that was 92nd minute race. <laughs> what I do understand is that Rohit Sharma doesn't possibly need to run. He just needs the skill to stand and deliver. Right. And if he he's not going for those twos and like and I quote you, you said don't go for the ones and the twos, go for the sixes. He's I doing guess. exactly that. Yes. So he's doing exactly what is needed for the sport. If he's not like fitness is medical fitness, it's not fitness for the sport. He's fit for the sport, but he might not be at the peak of his physical abilities. Is what the okay. So I I think if as an understanding, cricket obviously needs a different type of fitness. I think every sport will be different from the other. Slow yeah. in. Badminton. I mean, it seems a very demanding sport, and I have read in multiple places that you actually run more in a badminton match than you do in a tennis match. Now, this seems unbelievable, but I have seen multiple sources that say that it's it's actually true because tennis, when you go in front, you don't come back, but badminton, it's more a front, back, left, right. You know, you hear what I'm saying. So, what was what was what was that you felt that you needed as as an athlete from I think a very early age in your in your career? I mean, uh, to be honest, I wasn't blessed. Uh... As an athlete, I wasn't the most explosive, or you know, wasn't probably most quickest. I was probably one of the most chubbiest kids, uh, you know, back in my time when I was, I think, eleven or twelve. Uh, but what the sport requires is a lot of explosive strength. You know, your ability to continuously jump on court, and you know, if you look at you know some of the greats who are playing right now, Ginting and Momota Kento, are they so agile and so explosive? So it's not about how long you are lasting uh, on court, but you know how well you are doing. In that particular time, I mean, Ginting Anthony is somebody who can just jump and smash during the whole course. So it's a lot mm-hmm. of explosive strength, uh, and obviously you need extremely strong legs because you know because you want to play one-hour matches and you're going to have 65-70 stroke rallies. And if your legs, you know, uh, your glutes and your hammies are not equipped for that, you're going to be in trouble, especially in singles. You know, doubles you still have a little less court to cover, but the explosive strength becomes a little more than singles. So in doubles you might see, you know, some players a little heavy, but in singles you'll see everybody extremely fit. And those who are not, they're probably not in the top ten or top fifteen. Hmm. What is explosive strength, Shivram? How much of it do you have? Uh, I'm trying to actually work on it because there's a very specific way you can work on explosive strength versus stamina. Okay. And that is, I think, but I won't get into that. But what I think is a good example of explosive strength is Ronaldo taking free kicks. Like mm-hmm. how he passes the energy onto the ball, I think is a good way to describe explosive energy and how Messi will sustain till the 92nd minute when he eventually starts walking maybe is uh, <laughs> more stamina and just carrying the team on his shoulders. I think that's maybe a good difference too. So, so creating is, momentum basically, creating momentum out of nothing. Yeah. Like Roman Reigns throwing a Superman punch and pinning one, two, three. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, but yeah. it, that, that's showboating, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, no, football, footballers, as they keep, they, they, as they age, they also find this explosive strength. They don't, 
don't run the channels the way they did earlier. Uh, I mean, yeah. Like, I mean, apart from Danny Zlatan. Alves, who did it for all his life. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I think Zlatan but you know, coming like back to right your now. point in cricket, what I don't get is uh, how can uh, somebody just come in for fielding? You bat like uh, nothing against Anukul Roy, but all he did was you know fielded for the Mumbai Indians. Right. So you are fit enough to bat. You are fit enough to bowl. But you can't field, and you get a player who is extremely fit just to field. I mean that that is somewhere where we should draw the line. I I hope somebody does. The squad is bigger than the actual team playing. Is exactly. what is happening. Exactly. Karthik is a big fan of cricket. He's not saying anything. No, no. I mean this this is but uh, I mean what Slok is talking here is about the rules. I mean we had we have had cases like this since Ricky Ponting was run out of the Ashes in 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 two thousand five. So I mean these substitute fielders, specialist fielders are used. Yeah. And I don't mind seeing a better fielder rather than certain players attempt to run after the ball to put it, <laughs> to put it nicely. Like you don't want to watch that on television. I right? think you're going more for aesthetic than <laughs> than actual like untouchable rules of a sport. No, you which you is fair. want to remember your childhood, right? Trying to chase <laughs> after a, a cricket ball. So <laughs> I, I would rather see Brendan McCallum go there and you know. Do something special. So, so you want to. So, so what you want to see is for the larger good of the game, right? Yes. Uh, Shiva, so isn't, he the, isn't he the same guy who said we don't want five subs, we only want three subs? Let these people. <laughs> yeah, right. He said no subs. He yeah, said no subs. subs. He said no subs. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fulham subs, no subs. What difference is it going to make? Oh, Fulham has substitutes. <laughs> we have a very we have a bloated squad. If you ask all experts, we have they've included squad. all the supporters they have. So <laughs> you they have you <laughs> have a squad, <laughs> which which just just qualifies to be a squad. So. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So, I, but I want to conclude this again. I want to bring a football example and the most famous one of recent past. And this is something close to your heart as well, Shlok, because you are a Chelsea fan. Eden Hazard for seven years was the best player at Chelsea. One of the best players in the Premier League, at least in the top three, and one of the best players in the world as well, at least in the top ten in in that period of time. So he left Chelsea, a sad day, blah 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 blah. But he's gone to Madrid. He scored, I think, one goal in a year. He, by his own admission, has put on weight. He said he has eaten a lot of chocolates, this and that. He gets frequently injured. Is this merely a case of of him not having a sense of discipline? Because I mean, he feels like he's maybe made it playing at the Santiago Bernabeu, or I mean, I, I don't know what it is, right? Because we all want to see Eden Hazard at his best, and I know Sapre and I we're, we're big fans. We want to see him, you know, back to what he was when he was scoring those amazing goals against Liverpool, say in the cup. I think it's more to do with man management skills. I think that is why a manager is so you know highly rated in a football club. So you're I mean, blaming Zidane? I'm not blaming Zidane. Nice. But- Zidane has had that issue with Bale as well, right? I mean, Bale also is a world-class player. You cannot freeze him out completely, right? I mean, I still think Zidane is is a great manager, but he's no Mourinho or he's no Sir Alex Ferguson. Wait, wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, he's no Mourinho. Oh, come on! Don't Mourinho is easily <laughs> one of the best managers. Yeah, of they, they they don't like him, man. Don't don't listen to them. Like for some reason, they <laughs> are. Yeah. I love Mourinho even at first. So. No, no, but why should a golf player be fit? I don't understand. <laughs> 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 uh, he scored the other day, so yeah, he did. But he, I mean, uh, to be to be fair, and uh, now okay, let's let's just get into the football conversation. To be to be fair, him Kane and Son wasn't really working. Like I I know he scored and he started his first match, but he's he's a long way off what these yeah. two guys are and and what he was at his best. Okay, so at this point, I think I think uh, Slok, we've heard about your podcast, we've heard about your career, we've heard a little bit about fitness. Guys, go Google explosive strength. Uh, one day you will get it like the four of us do right <laughs> now. But for the time being, we Don't will brush. take we will take a quick break and be right back. Give me ten push-ups, Shivra. How many times have you motivated yourself to improve your sleep, or lose weight, or be more productive? How many times have you failed? Hi, my name is Ashton Doctor. Tune into my show, The Habit Coach Podcast, where we focus on creating small, tiny habits to improve your life instead of those big, impossible tasks. So make listening to me a habit every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on the IVM Podcast app, or ivmpodcast dot com, or on your favorite podcasting app. Okay, welcome back to Football Football, our final part of our special post Diwali episode with Shlok Ramchandran. Shlok has represented India in in basketball. He is available on Twitter. Twitter, where are you at? 
such a loki h95 on twitter and instagram and instagram so message him there and tell him you remove the x from his profile yeah that let him tell him to do that shivram slok was messaging me he was asking me do you guys play fantasy football we do we do uh, unfortunately we're not very good at it but a lot of people are very very good at it our fantasy league is uh, the code is h3omya that's h3omya go to fantasy.premierleague.com and you can join the football triple league we're actually doing very very badly and now because it's a two week break except i think sapre uh, sapre has done well but i'm just including him so that we feel one because this is one podcast hashtag one podcast and now you're also on the same network so you can't do well either Do you, I, I don't do well anyways. So, yeah. You don't do well. Well, welcome to the party. This is where we hang out. You yeah. can find us here every Wednesday. Um, who are your picks now that we have the international break and we just spoke about fitness? A lot of people are possibly not traveling as we last heard uh, to play international games. They're going to be sitting in their um, uh, you know home countries where they represent their clubs. So they're not traveling. So they have two months to put on weight or get better. <laughs> um who do you think we should pick for the coming week because there is some amazing games happening in the coming week so there is a certain chelsea winger called hakim ziach oh nice um, yeah i've just bought him so you guys shouldn't because i have bought him <laughs> he's not going to do anything now so i would suggest you to go and pick helder costa from leeds united really i got a minus I, one last week by the way yeah but still i think he's On goal, quality huh? man he's quality nice. I, i i really like him i really like the way leeds have been playing Uh, uh, blah 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 blah. Chelsea, blah, blah. wait, wait, wait. Just now only, I was saying, wait one minute, Shivram. All you people have been talking about Leeds for four months. <laughs> They are sitting there at 16th in the table or 15th in the table. All this nonsense talk about Bielsa is attacking football. Every match they go and concede four goals. Shameless club. Yeah. I hope they go down. And so, so for everyone, a lot of explosive strength. So <laughs> for <laughs> everyone who doesn't know, Karthik's uh, Twitter and Instagram are at a year rant. Uh, now you've seen an example. Newcastle is playing Chelsea. um because you're a chelsea fan and apart from zh what's up with werner i thought he's going to score like 20 already he's been so good i mean i mean he scored mm. almost every okay. time i mean i come on i mean he's he's been so good he's not scored a lot of goals you can you can <laughs> say the same thing about kai havertz as well i mean kai havertz he had, had covid scored. i'll leave him out <laughs> i know i'm just telling i'm just telling you kai havertz reminds me of uh, a young mesut ozil with a little more work rate Are both are outside ties. <laughs> good job, good a job. A very young. That's why I said a very young Messi was there. And he used to play with Madrid and Ronaldo. Uh, yeah, that that and Arsenal first season. Ah, uh, correct. And now, good now answer. he won't even get into the Fulham squad. Uh, but <laughs> he's trying. He's trying. He wants to stay in London. <laughs> Fine. Okay. So Everton is playing Fulham. On that note. Yeah. What do you think about Everton? Where do you think they're going? I think they're finishing top eight for sure. Top eight? Why? Well, that's not bad. Yeah. yeah I mean, that, top I, six. Could be top six. I think they'll fade away. I think one injury in the back line. They don't have a lot of support Sorry. in the back line. Either Yeri Mina goes or or Michael Keane gets injured. They were They're ten got three. You're saying top eight. eight. Sorry, you're saying top eight. Yeah. David Moyes got them up to top five. I mean, Ancelotti can do better. Moyes was an excellent manager before he went to a certain club and yeah, was ruined. I agree. I agree. Moyes got them to fourth also in two thousand four, two thousand five. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Moyes was, was wasn't Moyes last at West Ham though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, no. As in yeah. back in the day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sapre is just making a parallel. Oh, eight is uh, not yeah. as good because David Moyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where is that? Anyway. Yeah, but the thing is that I, I've been so impressed by Southampton, though. I mean, I see them finishing top eight. I don't know why. Wow! I see them how many teams are top, top eight? Don't ask me. United. Yeah, basically, <laughs> Arsenal United are not there. I'm going to show. Yeah, Arsenal. Arsenal is not there. United, maybe if they sack Ole. Uh, but uh, uh, but yeah, I see Spurs, Everton, Chelsea, Liverpool, Man. Hey, wait, City. wait, wait. Okay, so you're giving us your no, no, prediction not, for no, the. No, 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 I'm just giving. You well, now you can give us your prediction for the top eight. Uh, so it's Chelsea. End of the not Christmas, not end of the season, right? End of the season, yeah. So Chelsea. <laughs> well, I'm not biased at all. Keep going. No, this is Chelsea. not any order. It's not no particular order. Chelsea, City, <laughs> Liverpool, Spurs will be my top four. uh then number 5 would be uh, i like to say united okay i'll go top 5 will be united 6 will be everton 7 will be arsenal hey, not have, bad have Thanks. i missed have i missed out anybody leicester. i think leicester city of missed out oh yeah, yeah sorry so i would put fifth at leicester sixth united seventh arsenal and eighth southampton 
And I see Fulham. No, Liverpool. So now, no, no, Everton also. Everton also has disappeared from this topic. No, no, Everton Stoke is getting very confused. I need to write this down. Next yeah, time. you need to. So, we, when we get you back on, when, 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 yeah. when, when so the season is. I'm just telling is... you my top five. My top five sure. is Chelsea, City, Liverpool, Spurs, and. Uh, I have missed somebody. So this is not. It's fine. It's fine. We yeah. don't care. What yeah, bold, is your prediction? Bold, bold predictions by Slocum. <laughs> yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. I see Fulham relegating, Fulham oh, relegating for sure. Fulham Sheffield are relegating for sure. No, no. Fulham will just miss relegation by three points. Yeah, I love you, Shiva. <laughs> no, I want, we, yeah, we want them for one more season. Come on, man. <laughs> They've come after so long. We need one more prediction. This is not for FPL. This is just for football. Spurs will play City. Spurs are in form. City, not so much. Give us a prediction and we want to score line. I I think 2-1 for City. Oh, wow. Away. City is playing yeah, away. away. Yeah, City is going to win 2-1. I think uh, KDB is going to come to the party. Uh, Harry Kane is going to be on the score sheet and will be... No, he won't be because I have him on FPL. <laughs> uh, so, it's going to be 2-1 with uh, Gabriel Jesus scoring, hopefully. And hmm. KDB. And for uh, Spurs, uh, you'll have uh, either Son scoring. I have him, but he's still going to score. <laughs> cool! Wow, that's bold. What do you think, Karthik? What's going to happen? City I was, I was, I was probably picturing Shlok as a child when, when he said, "Badminton is my job, and football is his love." He's sitting there and he know he's 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 imagining who's scoring goals. Also, I'm sure his parents are telling him, "Get away from football! Go play badminton." <laughs> like that, that would have been a a fun sight to yeah. to see. I mean, what I told you, Spurs are winning the title last time. Why are you asking me? Tottenham Achha, are winning sir. everything. Achha, oh, okay. no, no, no. Tottenham are not winning. See, all this don't yeah, listen to winning, no? Why don't you take <laughs> this on Twitter? Yeah. So, so, I, 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 if I can interrupt you there, we spoke about fantasy. Shlok, uh, I don't know if y'all, y'all probably can't see this because it's a podcast, but Shlok is wearing a Chelsea jersey. Shlok, the last time the guy who won our Football Should Ball podcast got a Chelsea jersey for free. So it's it's great. You can join us and you can, yeah. considering now that you don't have a quote-unquote job, you yeah. can maybe win a jersey for yourself if you finish. No, no, top. I'm not going to win. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I like we this. have this group, right? We really? have this FPL group with all the badminton players. You've got Parupali Kasha, Pranav Chopra. Everybody is there. Can you just uh, add us also? We can yeah, just yeah, we can add chat. But the person who wins it is a 17-year-old who is just playing... Who's got some some consa and Tillian? Uh, he's he's gonna triple up on Ashton Villa defense. Oh wow, that is not a bad deal, especially yeah. because they were playing Arsenal. Exactly. Uh, Sabre, I think we can go lower. Why don't you get Kimaya to make an FL team, <laughs> <laughs> and then we can take that seventeen-year-old for all his money. Who do you think is uh, who is putting up my FL team right now? It is her. Oh, it is her already. No, okay. No, because I did last year. You saw how I performed. This wow, we have better. someone who's eight months, I think. How old is your cat, Karthik? Uh, she'll be two or three. Three. This one oh, she's three. older than Kimaya. I, he. Damn he, it. He, huh, he. He. <laughs> okay, cool. Live, live updates from Karthik's house. I, I would just like to put in one thing. Mm-hmm. Yes, the scout in the Premier League app is a scam. Please do Why do you say that? that? Because every time I pick somebody from the scout, he doesn't do anything. Oh, conspiracy. Nice. Yeah, say it once more. Na? Scout sucks is what he said. <laughs> FPL scout sucks. If you want to, please don't follow them. Nice. Never voice, of, voice of consumer. Yeah, voice of consumer. We'll actually cut this out and put this on Twitter because I follow a bunch of people who write for Scout. So I'm sure they'll be happy to uh, listen to this. <laughs> and you'd be surprised. A couple of them are actually from Bombay. Oh, wow. I'd like yeah, to so meet them. They'll, they'll find you. They'll find you. <laughs> like Liam Neeson. I'll find you and I'll steal you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Don't, 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 don't go that far. This is still family friendly. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So, what else? What else about uh, what have you observed this season, Slok? We know you, you follow football like from the A to Z to the B to the F. So, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, I mean, I was saying Brighton and Fulham. Those are yeah. two names. <laughs> you know what? To, to, to tell me that he watches a lot of football. Slok is trying to tell me, I see even clubs like Brighton and Fulham. <laughs> I mean, you are Serie A B, so... That, so that, I am a little different. Like. Different, yeah, yeah. Aparichit. <laughs> oh, wow. He's taking pot shots, man. And Shiv- Shivram shows. is pakka getting you back on, you know. Like. <laughs> just for that, just for that. Um, I've been nice. impressed by you know, a lot of these smaller clubs, to be really honest. Southampton, Brighton... Oh, Tariq Lamptey, what a superstar. Chelsea again, brilliant. You know, letting go of the superstars. <laughs> yeah, I was just, I just to say that. Chelsea. There's Kevin De Bruyne, go, brother. Go, star. Bano. Please, now Tariq Lamptey, go, star. Bano. Romel Lukaku, what are you I, doing here? Go become a star. I actually have a question on that one. There's one Chelsea superstar who's been making videos of his own 
fitness because you spoke about fitness, right? His name is Danny Drinkwater. Oh yeah. <laughs> what what do you think about what's happening with him? Do you he's still at Chelsea. I, yeah, he's he under twenty three or something. He's playing. In Stoke's FPL team also. <laughs> oh man, I I need to get him on. I mean, I don't think he's even listed on the FPL squad. He's not. He's playing he's for the not, reserves. I mean, it's it's a. I mean, I mean Danny Drinkwater. I I thought was an absurd by any ways, but. The happiness in Leicester fans' faces when they got 35 million for Danny Drinkwater. Um, I mean, could be or can't life. If you can get Danny Drinkwater for 35 million, I can win. Let's say current be or can't. No, but uh, let's do I that. I can't. I can't. My dialogue is never seen ever. Aren't you getting? Nice. Aren't you getting 30 million for Bakayoko? Oh yeah, but Bakayoko is still playing, right? In, uh, in Serie A. <laughs> he's not playing well, but he's playing. Hey, he's playing well. Yeah, he's playing pretty pretty well. He, he is at Mi- Milan or uh, Napoli. He was at he was at he was at Milan. Milan, 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 Milan. But I've been Milan impressed by the smaller clubs. To be really honest, I've been impressed by Brighton. I've been in... Southampton, man. How good have they been? Brighton, he's been impressed by. Hey, what is this guy talking about? He is talking about one Mopay, position Kastik. above Fulham in the table. Why is it Fulham's not right? Like, play, it's, right? I mean, it's not always about. It's not the the always about playing. the points, Karthik. Yeah, Fulham it, it, keep, keep the playing. ball, play nice passing moves. It's like watching a training session. Now, what can get more exciting than <laughs> keep that? Keep the ball, Fulham. Keep the ball. <laughs> yeah, we do. We just don't do anything with it. <laughs> <laughs> <You> pick <laughs> it up <laughs> from the net. I mean, the the only thing Thomas Kearney does is that look for Alexandro Mitrovic. Oh, I love that one forward you have, Kamara. He does absolutely yeah. nothing. Abu Bakar Kamara, right? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely nothing he does for Fulham, and they still play him. I don't know why. Arey, Fulham should be Fulham should be shown the Aina. <laughs> oh, very nice, very nice, well done. On that note, another Karthik. Chelsea reject, another Chelsea reject. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, this was yeah fun. Yeah, it started a little yeah. Oh, but I have one one question before we go. and i'm not able to remember it now so i'm going to keep talking until i remember the question which was shlok uh, i don't know the actual question shlok what what uh, one one final word for you what are your career prospects right now in your badminton professional life um i mean just badminton professionally i have always said never never say never if mm-hmm. if a corporate comes up and tells me that shlok you know you play outside the system i'm re- i'm ready to fund you we'll get you a partner You know, I'm up for it. But I'll, I'll uh, get your hopes up a bit. We know for a fact that a lot of potential sponsors listen to us every yeah. every week. So, so you please, any potential sponsors? Word. Yeah, any potential sponsors? I'm ready to come back from an indefinite sabbatical. Please put in a DM. Uh, you know, just send me that you know a proposal. I'll be you know happy to come back on board if I've got the money. Uh, for sure. But apart from that, if not that, then you know, podcast is going pretty well. I'm hoping that you know I get. Better at it and get a mic at least. So that is my next golden life. I thought he was going to say sponsor. I was going to say get in line <laughs> first of all. Poor ki baat. See, but Sun Sunbi tells me that you know, bro, we need to get a sponsor by episode ten. I I laughed at her. I'm like, are you mad? Tenth episode, you want sponsor? अरे यार हमने invest ही भेजा है दूसरा season चल रहा है तो बोल जाए तो sponsor की बात कर रहे हो धीरे धीरे हमारे पास बात है हम हम ना बोल रहे sponsors को correct वो phone करने से पहले हम मना करते थे no बात नहीं करें true caller भी नहीं देखता मैं give me a number first this was good man thank you so much लोग this was amazing yeah thank you so much for having me guys it was an absolute pleasure being on football should ball it's one of my most liked podcast on the IBM network and in general Uh, you know, I take uh, pot shots at Karthik because he's a film fan. But thank you so much, Karthik, because I you know, spoke to you first for getting me on the show, and you know, you know, being actually very warm to me. So you know, thank you so much once again, and do listen to the Millionaire Athlete. Yes. It comes out every Monday morning. So whenever you're going for your commute and you need some motivation, uh, please go and you know listen to stories. You know, we get from our guests, and you know, write into us and and listen to you know amazing podcasts on the IBM Podcast Network. How are your promotion? Done, done, done. That, that, that was better. That was a better closing than what we also do. Yes, yeah. Kavita, if you're listening, do not give him our one of our roles on huh? this podcast. <laughs> this still is three of us. No, no. Hey, we did this for the first ten episodes. We did very nicely. Every time we used to record new. Correct. Yeah, correct. Yeah, Now we just clap to recognize. Yeah. <laughs> so if you like this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IBM Network. You can listen to us on the IBM Podcast app or ibmpodcast. dot com. You can also follow us on our social media handles. We are at IVM Podcast on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to reach out to me, I'm Fickleberry Hun on Twitter and Instagram. That's Huckleberry Finn, but Fickle. Uh, if you want to reach out to me, I am Sapre on Twitter and G Sapre on Instagram. You can reach out to me at Irant, which is I Y E R A N T on Twitter and Instagram. This is football. Should ball recognize? 
Whether you're an established sports person or a budding one or simply a sports enthusiast, join us, Tanvi and Shlok. We are two passionate pro badminton players talking policy, mindset and everything sport. So tune in to the Millennial Athlete every Monday only on the IVM Podcast Network. Trust us, it's going to be lit. Are you looking for India's most awesome cricket podcast? Are you now tired of listening to the same old guys drone on about cricket everywhere? Edges and Sledges is a weekly cricket podcast hosted by three fans of the game, Varun, DJ, and myself, Ashwin. It was established in early 2018, has over 60 episodes now, and is of course now proud to be on the IVM Podcast Network. Each week, we get together from three different time zones, the USA, the UK, and Singapore, and we talk about things from the world of cricket with a focus on Indian cricket. We often interview special guests from all around the world, including former cricketers and cricket media personalities. So check out Edges and Sledges, the cricket podcast, now on the IVM network.